Hey, what's up guys? Mina is here and welcome back. Well, today it's going to be a tracking tutorial because tracking is very important and this is a skill that you should have. So, I mean, without tracking, I couldn't be able to do any of this uh, stuff here. So, yep. All right, so let's jump to After Effects to export this footage in frames and start tracking in BF Track. All right, so I got my footage here inside of After Effects, and one thing to notice is the frame rate. So if you press Control key for the project settings, you will find the frame rate is set to 23.976 which is something that we wouldn't be able to work with inside wave track so just make sure it's 24 or 25 straight so i need this 24 and we will work with 24 frame inside of wave track all right so let's export this so to do that i'm going to select my footage and I'm going to composition at render queue i'll come to lossless and under the format it's going to be bng sequence and you don't want to have the underscore instead just put here a dot because Maya will not be able to read the underscore sequence so make sure that we have a dot sequence and you press save where you want to, this to be saved in and press render I already done that so I'm not going to do it again all right, so the first thing that we want to do inside BF Track is to set a new project. And to do that, you can come to this project icon. And here we can create a new project. And in the options, we can give it a name. So let's call, let's call this Walking Dot. And you save it. You give it a path to save it in. Let's so in Track to choose and it's very important to frame rate to set this to match after effects we exported our footage in 24 frames so make sure that we are having the same here 24 and you press confirm and after that we can load our footage if we came to to this panel here all right so i have located my footage and what i'm going to do is going to click and drag and drop this to the page one. So there is a C here and this stands for cache. So we can click here and we can start to caching our, our footage. So this software is a whole based on nodes. So the first node you want to use is the auto rack. So I'm going to right click under tracking, you can find auto track. Inside the auto track nodes, we have the candidate number and the target number. The candidate number is how many features the software is attempting to find. And the target number is how many features it's trying hard to keep. So I will set the candidate number to 200 and the target number to 100. minimum length I will set this to 10 frames uh, this is how many frames the tracking points are going to last and I will be tracking from frame 1 to 192 from start to finish then coming to the search method I will set this to a pillar accuracy and then deformation to rotate scale and skew and I hit auto track Alright, as you can see now, we are tracking this person along with the background, but we don't want to do that. So what we can do is creating a trash mask around him, and this mask will tell Beef Track to ignore anything inside of it. So let's do that by coming to the mask and choose Bavier Roto and start to draw a mask around our character.
Alright, so we just finished the oats track and I ended up with a lot of info here. So what I will try to do is I will try to be more selective to points and do some cleaning and delete points that are popping in and out because more often than not they are going to mess up the track. So I will grab the marquee tool and start to select and delete the tracking points. So the software track points of details based on contrast, which means that reflections, trees, spectral highlights, motion blur, these are the worst to track because it's changing its position from one frame to another. So you need your tracking points to be purely diffuse and spread along on the floor to help the software to draw the perspective of the shot. Alright, so I think that's good enough for now. I may come and delete more points if I need it to later on. After that, I'm going to right click and add the user track node. And it's very important because the software will consider the user trackers as more like the foundation of how the shot's going to be. So the user trackers allows you to manually start to put points that you know they are gonna be more effective so like this corner here i am going to press on create and in the option area i will set the deformation to rotate scale and skew and i will set this to be the default settings for the future trackers Then I'm going to track it by pressing on this double arrow. Now we can come to enhance and start to add some adjustments to see more details better. Like here I added the curve adjustments. What's happening here is the trackers is being cut off at the end. So what I can do is come in the frame right before it shoots out. I will hit on the R plus, which will remove the keys on the right di direction. And I will press on hide so it will be hidden for the rest of the shot.
all right so i have went on and added more points and it's time to get a camera solve out of this so i'm going to right click under solving i'm going to add a camera solve node then i will hit solve all Okay, now we have a camera solve just finished, but if we came to where it says the focal length, if you know if you know the focal length of the shot, you can choose known and you can write them here. But since I don't know the focal length of the shot, I will use a node under the utilities called estimate focal. And that's where we will try to match the perspective of the shot by matching the X, Y, and the axis to the shot. So this is what I'm trying to do here. Now, if I jump to the camera solver in the focal lens option, now it says known and updated. So I will solve the camera again. After that, I will add an orientcy node. And I will choose a point and set this to be the scene origin. Now in the edit mode we can start to rotate the grid more to match the perspective. After that I will add the test object node. So under geometry add test object and I will double click on the thumb tag and it will be added and for the interaction mode I will set this place this to place at select feature and that will allow me to add it on any point after that I will finally come to add the export node where we will choose Maya ASCII 2011 and press export. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. My name is Mina and please subscribe because I'm having these tutorials coming up next week. Almost every week I will have a tutorial. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye.